Hi, I'm Naomi Hussain. I'm a Professor of Development Studies in the Department of Development Studies at SOAS University of London. Hi, I'm Hajun Chang. I'm Professor of Economics at the Department of Economics, SOAS University of London. Great to finally meet you, Arjun. Hi, very nice to meet you, Naomi. Right, who's going to go first? Uh, well, I'll go first. <laughs> Let's see. In your opinion, what are the most effective ways to empower vulnerable people, either economically or socially? The most effective way of empowering people economically and socially is politically. Mm. And that is, of course, very challenging. Yeah. And I think that... One of the things that we've seen in the world uh, in the last few years is that it's really hard to be empowered politically if you don't have trade unions and that a lot of big companies, governments also, are really restricting That's your right. rights to organise, yeah. to join trade unions. Mm. And I think until you have that political power, collective political power, it's really hard to be empowered mm. economically and socially. You know, trade unions grew up uh, in factories yeah? and uh, without some uh, element of uh, industrialization, I think it's uh, very difficult to create uh, the trade union movement and therefore progressive uh, political uh, movement that will be sustainable. Right, let's see what we've got next. Oops. What policies can governments implement to create an environment conducive to reducing inequality and fostering prosperity? Mm. I think we, we might have uh, a lot to say about this. Yes, the, economically speaking, there are two main ways. Uh, one is uh, to regulate the market so that it uh, cannot generate uh, too much inequality. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can uh, protect uh, the small producers, you, know, the, you can uh, restrain what uh, the, these uh, large companies can do and so on. And the other is that, uh, basically tax and redistribution. Yeah? So the, you have a uh, progressive taxation, welfare state. Really though, the one thing that I think would be really, that I think is really important for reducing inequality that governments can do and should do, and it makes sense for everyone that they do, is really invest massively in basic public services. Mm -mm. Because uh, I think one of the greatest sources of inequality is gender inequality. Yep. And women, when it comes to the, 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 the care economy, as we call it, yeah. reproduction of society, Looking after children, looking after the elderly, bringing people up, cooking, cleaning, and so on. It's still mostly done by women. That's right. And you could reduce gender inequality massively by big investments in public services. I mean, most countries in the global south, you mm -mm. know, getting clean and safe water, for instance. Absolutely, yeah. Something women yeah. spend hours on hours, every yeah. day. And that alone, I mm -hmm. think, in countries like Tanzania, yeah. research has shown that you can really dramatically cut the number of hours yeah. a day, you can dramatically improve people's lives Absolutely, by yeah. providing, basically, yeah. providing clean water. Yeah. This is the last one, so I'm not choosing in any way. <laughs> what role does education play in breaking the cycle of inequality and promoting sustained prosperity among vulnerable? And how do your areas of expertise play into this? Oh, it's a big long one, but a really yeah. good one, I think, to ask. You know, we're really optimistic. I think there's a lot of optimism, a lot of Pollyanna-ish almost feeling around what education can achieve. Mm. Um, and I think to some extent it's, it's not true anymore. I think, you know, governments don't invest as much as they need to in education mm. systems to really make education reverse inequality in the way that it, it potentially can. Mm -hmm. And I think we see now, and we see this in, in, you know, in the ways in which people invest in their children's education all around the world. I've seen this in my work on the politics of education, that people try very hard, of course they do, to give their own children an advantage. It's just a natural Absolutely, thing yeah. that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that uh, this view that uh, if you educate uh, people in a meritocratic system, is going to reduce uh, inequality in the long run. I think it's uh, very naive uh, because uh, these uh, legacy students who get into uh, universities uh, yeah. mainly because uh, their uh, parents or grandparents yeah. uh, went there. You are uh, basically favoring uh, middle class uh, children. So actually, unless you equalize the home environment uh, to an extent, I mean, that uh, you cannot uh, really call this system meritocratic. It's a bit like holding a race uh, equal that, uh, and fair only because that, uh, everyone starts uh, from the same starting line, despite the fact that, 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 that some kids have only one leg. You know, education is very important, yeah? Yeah. but you know, unless you do these other things, uh, you cannot uh, make it uh, contribute no, to the greater agree. equality. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Well, it's really good talking to you. Yeah, no, uh, thank you. I learned uh, so much uh, from you. <laughs> Did you? In this, yeah, yeah, conversation, yeah. I, I believe in the interdisciplinary studies, but it's not as if I'm very well educated in the political science. So, uh, do you think we've solved global inequality and do you think we've... Uh, well, uh, one step at a time. <laughs>